What's up, guys? Welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at DocuSign stock. This is ticker DOCU. This is a stock I've owned for a couple of years now, and we're going to do some analysis to find out if the stock is currently a good buy, as well as what do I think is a smart move to be making with the shares that I own. So first thing we're going to look at is the stock chart. In 2018, this company went public at about $38 a share, and over the next couple of years, it did pretty well. In 2021, it, it shot up to $310 a share. And since then, the stock is all the way down to $64 a share. So we're talking about a company that is a 64 or I'm sorry, a $13 billion market cap. And what this company does, if you don't know, is they are the number one leader of e-signatures. So all the documents that get sent across from one company to the next, they use DocuSign most of the time to do electronic signatures. So they're a very popular company and that's the good thing, but there's not many other good things going for this company, which we're going to get into in a minute. So I purchased the majority of my shares around $138, probably around $150, $160 a share as well. But lately I've been selling those shares because I'm down about 50% on those shares and I just, I don't see much room for improvement in the near term for this company. So I really don't want to be in these money losing companies like I have been in the last couple of years. So that's what I'm trying to fix. But if we look at the my checklist for this, we're going to see that they've done a great job growing revenue. And the, although net income is negative, they still have done a good job improving it. So we're going to go to revenue. This is a very impressive revenue growth story. I will say that. Over the last five years, they've averaged 40% revenue growth per year. So back in 2016, they were doing 250 million. And six years later, they're doing over $2.1 billion. So definitely a nice, that's almost a 10x in the last six years. So they're doing a great job growing revenue. Um, but if we look at net income, what you're going to see is that it's still negative. Okay. In the, in the most recent year, they lost $69 million, which was not as bad as some previous years. 2019, they lost 420 million, but they're still a money losing company. So both of those will get a check because they are improving. As for their valuation, this is where things got out of hand in 2021 when it went to $310 a share, which is probably a, let's see, that would be like a $65 billion valuation, something like that. And that's because they were growing super fast, but it's also because ARK Invest brought a lot of attention to this stock. And what you will see here is they bought shares all the way up to $230 a share. And since then, they've been selling, 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 selling. Now it looks like they're pretty much closed out of the position. So I'm sure they lost tons of money on that stock. And what we're going to go through here in a minute, one, we'll get into it in a, in, a, in a second. But number three is the valuation and the price to sales right now is about a 4.5 Another bad thing about this stock right now is you're going to see the growth is slowing down. So this year they're expected to do 18% growth and next year they're expected to do 8% growth. So that is a major difference from what they've been doing from those 40% growth numbers we looked at earlier. Growth is definitely decelerating by a large amount. Now, something that, that is still confusing me right now is the EPS numbers because the EPS numbers are positive. But as we just looked at, they're still a money losing company. So that's why... I like looking at net, net income more so than looking at the EPS. But overall, we see a company that's $13 billion and they're expected to do around $2.5 to $2.7 billion for this year and for next year. So that's a price to sales a little bit under a five. And if we look at something I made here, this is a chart showing what the price to sales normally is for companies growing at certain growth ranges. So let's say this one's expected to grow anywhere from eight to 18%. And that's why I see this company growing at around a five price to sales, if not really a four or even a three. That's why I think this valuation, it could go up maybe to like a $15 billion valuation, but it could also come down to like a $8 billion valuation because growth is slowing so much. Now, one thing that will help this company is if they get to profitability, that can make a huge difference in the valuation and in the stock price. But Still, who knows? That could be years before we see that. So, but it's still trading at a healthy price to sales at the moment. Are they innovative? I would say yes. E-signatures is definitely a 
some sort of innovation. So I would consider that a yes. And a moat, they have millions and millions of people using their their software and their num the, the number one industry leader. So that's also a moat. For the industry, I was very surprised to find out that the e-signature industry is expected to grow at a annual growth rate of 35%. That is a huge amount, especially compared to other industries and just the economical environment we're in at the moment. The return on invested capital, of course, is negative, so that's going to get a no. Healthy cash flow. This one I was very disappointed with. Definitely not good, but what is something that's a little bit deceiving is if we go to operating cash flow, it says it's positive, right? And it's a, and it looks good. It goes from 115 million to 457 million. So right off the bat, you think that things would be going pretty well for this company. But if we open this up, what we're going to find is net income from continuing operations is actually negative. They're actually losing $132 million. What is pushing this number up is stock-based compensation, which is incredibly deceiving. And if you've seen, if you follow Joseph Carlson on YouTube, he made a video about this recently talking about this. It's super interesting. I recommend you check it out. But this is what is throwing things off is they're not actually doing $457 million of operating cash flow. They're doing they're losing $132 million from net income. But they're just this cash is being added back to the operating cash flow of 510 million. So it's very deceiving. That number should be under financing. And then you see their cash balance is getting bigger. Um and free cash flow is growing. But again, it's just this whole this is thrown off by that. This is it really throws me off with the stock-based compensation. So that's gonna get a no. Diverse revenue streams, I put no, although they are an international global company. Um, and they do work in different sectors, but their real business, they, they have multiple ways of making money, but the large, large majority is just through their software as a service, the subscriptions they sell for using their e-signature software. That's just really one, that's one type of way of making money and other companies, there's other companies that can do this too, like uh, hello sign that is owned by Dropbox. They also do this. So it's not like they have some huge, I don't know, some huge technology or some thing that really sets them apart. Growing equity, no. If we check out equity here, what we're going to find is that equity has gone from 546 million in 2020 to 275 million. And then I guess you could say it has been growing over the last 12 months. So there is some growth there, um, which is looking pretty good. So I guess, okay, we can change that, I guess, just because in the last 12 months, they've been doing pretty well. Is it over 15% of the market cap? No, it is not. It's 468 million, and this is a $13 billion company. Is the share count decreasing? No, definitely not. This is another thing where, look at this. So look at this chart with the free cash flow compared to stock-based compensation. For many years, their stock-based compensation was four or five times what their free cash flow was. And then the most recent year, they had $445 million of free cash flow and $408 million with the stock-based compensation. So just not good. Just really not good there. But share count decrease is definitely not something they have here. As you can see, they're slowly growing the share count. So that's going to get a no as well. Healthy amount of debt. This is, so this is actually a nine. So healthy amount of debt. This one can go either way. If we want to look at the debt, we can see that it's not horrible. It's not, it's really not horrible. Current assets of one point, I like to look at current assets of 1.5 billion, let's say, and their current liabilities are roughly the same. And then long-term debt of 766 million. So it's not horrible. There's definitely a lot of other companies that have it worse. And this is a growing company. So it's not horrible. Respectable management, I put no for several reasons. Not only is, I mean, mainly because of the share-based compensation and that whole thing with the ca the free cash flow and how they're setting all that up, just not something that is good. Cash more than average annual income, yes, because they don't have any income, no dividend, and then it is 20 years old, I believe 2003, yeah, 2003 it was founded. So overall, it gets a nine out of 16. Once again, this is not a stock that I'm gonna be buying more of, or I'm really just sick of holding it. I've been holding it for probably almost two years now, and, I'm ready to get out of these money losing companies that are that are either not managed responsibly, like as we just saw with their free cash flow and stock based compensation, but 
so interest rates are higher right now as well. And that's not going to help a money losing company. And I don't like this type of deceiving management. Um, I'm ready to get into more stocks that are producing positive free cash flow and positive net income for the most part. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to be selling off these shares here and putting it into something like that's just a safer investment or keeping in, in keeping it in cash in Robinhood and earning 4.1% interest on that money. So that is my plan with this. If you have any questions, comment down below. Definitely interested to see and hear what you guys are doing and what your thoughts are.